I was always very fascinated with all the stories that my mom shared with us about her life in Morocco and the Sahara village life. And whenever she would serve us one of her hearty meals and so delicious, I couldn't stop myself but ask her, how did you make this amazing food back then? How did you get those amazing flavors of food that mainly cooked in its own juice? How did you bake? How did you grind spices? How did you grind your coffee at that time? I'm gonna step back in time and I'm gonna show you exactly that. And what's the secret of food that was cooked in its own juice? How can we bring back to life those amazing flavors that you can't find nowadays? How did I manage in those early years of Sephardi kitchen? Join me, I'll show you. So, let's do this, my friend. Let's bring back the history of the Sephardic kitchen. Hello to all my wonderful viewers and welcome to all the new ones. Come celebrate with me the making of this classic Mediterranean dish of eggplant and colorful vegetables. This colorful, beautiful dish is so delicious and so refreshing. It will accommodate any food preferences, whether you are a gluten-free, meat eater, dairy lover. This is one more Mediterranean treasure to fall in love with. Let's start. Hi everyone and welcome back to Sephardic Flavors. How do you like my new tank top? I love it. I ordered a sample from my store and by the way, you can order this tank top or a t-shirt or a hoodie or all kinds of other products with beautiful designs from my print store and the information is right below this video for you. Now back to today's video. Eggplants. Eggplants are wonderful. Eggplants are really versatile. You can use them for so many different dishes from uh, salads, first course, main course, and believe it or not, even as a dessert. And I have a video on my channel right here to prove it for you. And you can find the information even for my eggplant dessert jam right below this video. So, from salads to borekas to eggplant pies, eggplant quiches, main dish eggplants. Oh my gosh, as I said, there's so much to do. What are we making today? We are making a dish that will suit all of you that have all kinds of different food preferences. So we're making a baked eggplant dish that for vegetarians will serve as a main dish, for gluten-free as a wonderful dish, as a side dish for everyone, um, you can use it as a filling for a pie, you can use it as a salad, and it can be a hot salad or a cold salad, you choose. It's really easy, we need fresh items, but we also have the option for canned items if you don't have. For example, for those of you that don't have fresh tomatoes, my emergency supply will provide me with my organic canned tomatoes if I have to. The same with mushrooms. So what else do we need for today's dish? Really easy. We need tomatoes, garlic, of course, from my precious garlic jar. We're gonna need onions, beautiful colors of fresh peppers. How about parsley, let's not forget. Now, as I said, when we don't have fresh items, and especially when it comes to herbs, but you know how much herbs will add to your dish. So do not skip the herb step. So for example, today I don't have fresh basil, basilicum, as we say in the Mediterranean. So here is my other option and I'll get it closer so that you can see. I found it in my kosher deli 
and it's frozen basil, but you know what? Hopefully it will provide us with a wonderful flavor of basil. So to make sure that I don't skip this step, I'm gonna be using this frozen chopped basil. And this is how it looks in the back. And here you go. Now, you wouldn't be able to buy this frozen basil on my Amazon shop, but you could buy the dry basil on my Amazon shop. So if you're looking for dry herbs, I've got them for you on my kosher Amazon store. And of course, the information for my Amazon store is right below this video. Let's get started now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I have to chop the onions. For those of you that are new to my channel, here is a good tip how to avoid that gas that burns our eyes and make us cry. So just divide the onion to a half and soak it in hot, hot water. So it's going to be soaked in hot water for two, three minutes, not more than that. And all I'm doing, I'm going to grab half onion at a time and I'm going to chop it while the other halves are getting soaked and that really helps with that burning gas, with that burning gas. Another thing that I do, I always rinse my knife because when you rinse the knife with this hot water, it really helps, it washes off that gas from my knife as well. You don't need to thinly chop it. Just uh, cut it to small cubes, just like that. There we go. And that's how I'm gonna cut all the onions. And I'll be right back with you. Stay with me. We're making a delicious eggplant dish. Okay, this is my last onion chopped nice ready now by the way for those of you that do not like to chop onion you know you can always buy it frozen chopped and frozen and i've seen it in the super i even bought it several times but usually i like to cut it fresh but yeah there's our chopped onion beautifully chopped and ready for our delicious eggplant dish. To be honest with you, my trick for the hot water and soaking the onion, it's great. It does not eliminate the gas 100%, but I will tell you for sure that at least 75%, maybe 80% of the gas can be eliminated and your eyes will feel so much better. What can I say? Now to the eggplants. So we're supposed to fry the eggplants. I try my best not to fry things a lot. And so what I do with the eggplants, I bake them. So all we're gonna do here is, I've got here a half cup of olive oil. I've got my silicone brush and we're gonna get rid of the stem of the eggplant, just like that. Here we go. And I'm gonna slice the eggplant right in the center, just like that. I already turned on my oven, 400 degrees, and I'm gonna bake the eggplants. Um, if you're frying them, make sure that they turn brown, just a nice honey color brown. So I'm going to take my two half eggplants, I'm going to set them right here on the baking tray and I'm going to brush them with olive oil, just like that. And you know, I've got a lot of questions about the eggplants and um, so many of you guys are so frustrated because when you fry eggplants, they absorb so much of the oil. So let me share with you my trick for what do I do if I have to fry eggplants. What I usually do, I would slice the eggplants and I would soak them in a bowl, a large bowl with cold water 
and one tablespoon of salt. Now, if you're doing it, just remember, please, not to add salt to the recipe of whatever you're making, because then it's gonna be so, so, so salty. And so remember that. The eggplants will absorb some of the salt from the bowl with water and salt, and so you need to make sure that you do not add salt to your recipe. So that's important to remember. Oh, so uh, for how long to soak the eggplants in water and salt? At least an hour. Uh, if you soak the eggplants for one hour, that would be enough time for them to soak some of the salt and it would not absorb so much of the oil if you decide that you would like to fry your eggplants. So yeah, but I prefer the baking method. Um, they're still going to be nicely baked. They will brown a little bit and it's okay, it's good. I, we are really trying our best here in my home not to fry food. Here is my last eggplant. One of the questions that I often get is, how do you know a good olive oil? You would be surprised with my answer, but a good, good olive oil has a little bitter taste to it. A good olive oil is very, very green. And, and it has a very unique smell to it. Our eggplants are ready to go in the oven. I'm going to bake them for 30 minutes and then I'll check on them. Stay with me, we will be right back. While the eggplants are being baked in the oven, I'm going to chop my garlics. So, we need about eight garlic cloves. Um, you know, it all depends how large are your garlic cloves. You know, when they're very large, I would use less than eight. But I am Mediterranean, it's all about garlic. We eat and breathe garlic all day long. So I'm gonna use eight garlic cloves. So I wanted to share with you my amazing, amazing garlic chopper. And garlic peeler too. So this is my amazing thing. And I'm gonna get it closer so that you can see all the different things you can do with this. So it comes with two pieces. This is my garlic chopper and you can get it on my Amazon shop. And the link for this garlic chopper is right below this video. You have a direct link. So this is the peeler. We're gonna use this silicone peeler to help us peel off the garlic. And then we're gonna use the garlic chopper. Now look at this, this is amazing. Let's look at the whole thing. First of all, it's made of stainless steel. Amazing. Now you have here four different sizes of holes right here. And this will help you when you're using fresh herbs. Just insert the fresh herb in the hole. It depends at the size of the hole that you think you would need and pull it from the other side. And the only thing that will be left in your hand is the herbs leaf, whether if it's parsley, cilantro, basil, just anything. Uh, it, it's great, by the way, for rosemary, if you use a lot of rosemary. Then look at this. This will slice your garlic. This will give it nice slices. And remember, you are not touching the garlic all this time. This will slice your garlic, this will chop your garlic, and look at that, a bottle opener, look at that. This one is a bottle opener, so one, two, three, four different functions in one uh, stainless steel little piece. And look how angled it is. To make sure that you don't have to touch the garlic with your hands. All you really do is just Tilt it, and I'm gonna show it to you in action right now. All I'm going to do is take this garlic cloth, I'm gonna insert it here inside, right here, let's clean this cutting board. I need to make sure that you see the whole thing. Now, 
the garlic clove is inside and all I'm doing is, oh, the oven is ready. <laughs> all I'm doing is just rubbing it between two hands and this will peel off the garlic for me. Remember I told you that we're not gonna really touch the garlic in all this process. This is, this is amazing, I love this tool. And let's drop it. Oh wow, look at that. The peel just comes off, look at that. It came off, beautiful. Now, after we peeled off the garlic, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on my chopping board. I can go directly to the chopping part, but to make it easy for me, I'm gonna start with the slicing. I'm gonna slice it first, and then I'm gonna chop it. This will be so much easy. And remember, I am not touching the garlic itself, so my hands are going to be nice, clean, and they will not smell garlic. So here we go. All I'm doing, I'm gonna put the garlic right here and on top of it I'm going to press the slicing part. With the back of my knife I scrape the garlic just like that. Scrape it, good. See, I'm not really touching the garlic, excellent. Okay, and all I have here are slices of garlic. Now, I'm gonna turn this stainless steel amazing gadget and I am going to use the chopping part. Here we go. Just like that and in a second I'm going to show you a closer look of how the garlic looks. And here you can see there's the chopped garlic I'm going to scrape it with my knife, just like that, and it is absolutely minced, teeny tiny chopped, excellent. That's all I need. Here you go, excellent, and, and with all that, I did not touch the garlic. Here's the garlic. So, I'm going to do the same process for all my other seven garlic cloves and I'll be right back with you. With the back of my knife, I am going to scrape the garlic crumbs from this amazing gadget. Now, this goes in my dishwasher, this goes in my dishwasher, I am done. And I didn't touch the garlic. How good is this? I've got here two red bell peppers, and I've got here two green bell peppers and I'm gonna cut them to small cubes. And you know, sometimes I get comments from people that really do not use eggplants that much. I would encourage you to start using eggplants. In many ways, I would compare eggplants to tofu. It's this kind of a fruit that will really absorb the flavor of whatever you add to it. In many recipes, you would feel the distinguished flavor of an eggplant, but in many other recipes, you will not. So I would absolutely recommend start checking out more about using eggplants. And by the way, they're rich in fiber. They have a lot of iron in them. I was reading the other day that actually red bell pepper is really important. Red bell pepper has more vitamin C than oranges. Something to think about. Also, a very important fact about red bell pepper. See the inside of a red bell pepper? See the white side? This is where the rich vitamins really are. So don't, don't discard this. Use it in your cooking and in your salads. Discoveries, discoveries, right? <laughs> On to the green peppers. We're gonna need four large tomatoes or five medium size. 
And you know, for my famous matbucha dish, the tomato salad, oh my gosh, you know, it's not that tomatoes from a can wouldn't be good, but for example, the matbucha recipe, that's one dish that I would not compromise and I would not use canned tomatoes because you will be able to tell the difference. So if you're trying my video about the matbucha tomato salad, go with fresh tomatoes. That's one thing I wouldn't compromise. My parsley is nicely rinsed and I'm gonna show you again the garlic gadget I have. Here is how I use this amazing garlic gadget for my parsley. So all I'm doing, I'm going to insert my parsley into the smallest hole, just like that, and pull, and pull. Look what happens. I've got the stem and the leaves, they all stay in the garlic gadget. Let's do this again. There's my garlic gadget, there's my parsley. You can tell the, the large hole would be too large, then you have a mid, medium one, medium one, smaller one, and a very small one. I think for the skinny stem that I have here, I'm gonna use the smallest one, just like that, and all I'm doing All I'm doing now, I'm gonna pull. There you go. I've got the stem and all the parsley leaves, look where they are. They're right here. Take them out and your parsley leaves are ready to use for salads, for cooking, for decoration, for anything. Isn't that amazing? So again, if you would like to buy this amazing garlic and herb gadget, I have the link for you right below this video you can purchase it on my Amazon store. And thank you for the support. Okay, now for the exciting part, everyone. Here we go. We are going to start assembling the dish and put it all together. I'm gonna start with adding oil. Now remember the, the half cup of olive oil I had? Here is the leftover the olive oil that we brushed all the eggplant with. And if you watched my video about the different oils and different burning te point temperatures, you know that I recommend to mix two different kinds of oils to bring up the burning point. So olive oil doesn't have a high burning point. So what I usually do, I add a little bit vegetable oil and I mix it with the olive oil. This will bring up the burning point of the olive oil. I will be able to cook my food in a higher burning point of oil. So I've got the olive oil and the first thing we're gonna add to our uh, frying pan is the onions. Next, I'm going to add my eight uh, chopped garlic cloves. I'm going to let it cook for about five minutes before I can add my two different lovely colors of bell peppers. While this is cooking, I wanted to talk for a minute about the parsley. I get a lot of questions about parsley. I have a short video for you, everything that you need to know about parsley. I did the whole research about parsley, the importance of parsley, nutrition facts of parsley. It's all in that video and I'll put the link right below this video for you so that you can watch it and learn so much in two minutes about parsley. Next thing, let's add all the peppers. Red peppers, green bell peppers, beautiful. And we're gonna cook them all together with the onions and the garlic for about 10, 12 minutes. Give it a good mix. It smell is so good. I gave it about 15 minutes of cooking. It's okay, right? I've got here 12 ounces of mushrooms. 
It's from a can. I couldn't find mushrooms today, but that's okay. 12 ounces of canned mushrooms. Here we go. And you can use champignon, you can use shaitak mushrooms. It's fun. Give it a good mix and cook it for about 5 minutes. We're almost ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Fresh tomatoes are the best. Time for my parsley. Here we go. Parsley, parsley. Lots of parsley. This is about... This is the minimum of two cups of parsley. One more thing we have to add. The basil. And I found this in the kosher deli here in Denver. I am guesstimating here that each one of these little amounts here are equal to, to one tablespoon of basil. So again, this is how it looks if you're interested to know. The brand name is Dorot and I bought it in our kosher deli here in Denver. I'm going to use two of these amounts. Oh, it's so funny. They're frozen. And here, this is how they look. Throw them in. And to this, I'm going to add one teaspoon salt. So use, use your judgment when it comes to the salt. A half teaspoon black pepper. Here is something that I forgot to mention to you. The recipe calls for one jalapeno pepper, but I decided not to add it. That's why I upped the black pepper amount. Otherwise, I would be using maybe a quarter teaspoon black pepper, and I would use the jalapeno pepper. So, all I'm doing now, I'm gonna give it a good mix, and I am going to cook it for about five to seven minutes and then we'll add it to our eggplants because they are absolutely ready and baked. I wanted to show you how our beautiful eggplants look. Look at that. Look at that. And as you can see, I made slits in the eggplants when I took them out of the oven. So all I did, I took a paring knife and I ran the knife on each half eggplant, just like that, just like that. I have here one eggplant that I didn't do it yet, so that you can see how they look when they come out of the oven. Beautiful, and all I did, I just took the paring knife and ran the paring knife inside the meat of the eggplant, just like that just like that and the reason why i'm doing this is to make sure that when i put on the filling that the filling really gets to everywhere in between all the slits and the cracks that's where i that's where i want the filling to be oh i can smell the basil and i can smell the whole thing infused together oh i love it but definitely you smell the garlic and you smell the basil. We're almost done, guys. My oven is ready with 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius. And all I'm doing now, there's, the eggplants are still warm, but they're manageable. I can, I can touch them. I'm literally squeezing them in to fit them in the baking dish because I want to make sure that the filling really covers the whole baking dish they're pretty much squeezed and that's what I would like. But you can see that they're really, really squeezed, right? This beautiful and delicious filling is going to go right on top of the eggplant. And so what will happen, the flavors of the garlic and the basil and the parsley and all the vegetables that are cooked in here, they will all start dripping their juices onto the eggplants and that's what I want the eggplant will be flavored with these amazing juices. And then we're gonna put it in the oven and bake it together. The eggplant will be absolutely absorbed with everything that's in this delicious filling and it will be baked together. And then, and then all you do is scoop out one of this eggplant and serve it. Oh, wow. 
I'm so glad to share this recipe with you. So here you go. As you can see, let's top every eggplant with the filling and the juices. Remember, we are telling our baked eggplant to soak up all these amazing juices. What a dish! It's vegan, it's gluten-free, nut-free, soy-free, everything free, but not taste-free. Do you agree? Please let me know in the comments if you agree. Even though the baking dish is filled already, I am going to make sure and add every little bit of this filling here. Because remember, we're going to press it down in order to make sure that all the flavors and all the juices will go right through the eggplant slits that I made, the slits, and then the eggplant will be this delicious, yummy dish that has all the flavor of juices of these vegetables. Oh yeah. Make sure you're really covering every eggplant, totally covering it. And if you have to shift a little bit to make sure that it's all covered, definitely do that to make sure that we are helping the eggplant to soak the goodness of this filling. It's really a goodness uh, juice and and sauce and oh my gosh <laughs> look at me i'm so excited okay here we go here we go beautiful the other amazing prints and designs that I created there and thank you for your support it's very very much appreciated but I will see you to show you how I serve this amazing dish when it's freshly baked right from the oven in the meantime thank you for joining me don't forget to comment I love your comments and I read them I make sure to read all of them. Uh, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and like and share with your community. That's, that would be a great support for my channel. Thank you and I will see you in the next video.